welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Richie Contratesi. How are you doing, Richie? I am doing excellent. Thank you for asking. And yourself? Oh, fantastic. And Richie is the author of the best-selling book, In Spite of the Odds. And he has had an amazing, uh, you know, an, an amazing life and, and one full of demonstrating how if you set your mind to goals uh, and really can build your own motivation, your own self-confidence, how you can, as his book says, uh, how you can be successful in spite of the odds. So, um, you know, Richie, starting off with your story, I mean, your story starts off a lot with this goal of playing for Ole Miss, right? So what, yep. so why was that why was that so important to you and why did you not give up on that that dream even when there were all these obstacles put in front of you Yeah absolutely so growing up as a kid um things were uh weren't very easy when I was mm. growing up and my parents got divorced uh, I failed fifth grade and I really hit rock bottom and I almost actually made one of the worst decisions of my life by um by taking it and um, since I could ever remember, my dream was to play college football. Like It is what I loved. I watched it on TV, and I was like, one day I'm going to do that. And um, after all this went down and I failed fifth grade, I went on the internet and I looked up the academic requirements needed in order to play college football. And that night when I looked at those requirements, mm-hmm. I looked at them and I didn't say, you know, you know I could definitely do that. But when I looked at them, what I did say is, you know what, maybe this is possible. And at that moment, I, re- I literally wrote down the requirements and circled what I needed. And that moment, I had written down my goal. And all of a sudden, I subconsciously, I started to do things differently. I acted differently. I did things every day to attract myself closer and closer to that goal. And, and things started to happen differently around me. And so that's kind of uh, where it all started. And, and I like that what you just said there about the fact that you didn't look immediately and go, okay, yeah, I can do this. But you said, <laughs> you said that this is possible. Right. And I think that's a great uh, that's a great uh, starting point for the salespeople and sales managers who are watching this. And that is switching your mindset to the possible rather than seeing things as impossible or setting your goals too far ahead. But just considering that, yes, it's possible that I can make this. Yes, it's possible that I can make this quota. Um, So so, Richie, what were so, you know, you decided this was possible. You started doing everything to to try and put this dream to right. But it wasn't it wasn't exactly exactly smooth sailing was it no not at all (laughs) so what are some of the things that happened and how did you overcome them yeah so i mean okay so even starting younger on right so um i'll start just with little league and always being the smallest guy in the field number one but just having this delusional mindset where it didn't matter like i saw myself just as big as everybody else and in high school um my first year at uh the new school it was a new high school we went zero and ten and the second year we won three games and my senior year I was like you know I was keeping up stats with all these bigger guys but my senior year boom I broke my ankle and so all these kind of even small schools that I was looking at boom out the window um so I ended up going to Jacksonville University it was the it's a non-division one no athletic scholarships uh only opportunity that I had and so my first year there, I was redshirted. They didn't think I was good enough to play. And then I go home from Christmas break, and this one coach that gave me a chance was fired. Oh. And so uh, I come back, and a new head coach, he, he took a, one look at my 5'7", 150 pounds, and he said the, that they were going to go into a different direction. And so basically, I was cut from the team. And uh, go ahead. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, right, okay, so – Everything here is for most people. Everything that's happening here is is telling you, Richie, this ain't gonna happen, right? <laughs> it, it, you know, the universe is sending you all of these messages. So, how did you manage to, you know, for a lot of people, they would have said, okay, the universe or whatever is telling me to do something else. How did you take all of this and say, okay, all of these obstacles are in front of me, all of these setbacks, but I'm still gonna pursue my goal? Yeah, I think it's all mindset. You know, literally just always having this and I I really it's a delusional mindset that regardless of all these people telling me that I can't do this regardless of sometimes me telling myself I couldn't do it I just had this mindset that 
you know what? I'm just as good as these guys. I can do it. I can figure it out. Um, and this whole, and, and a lot of people, they live on fate. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, I, I, this didn't go in my favor. So, uh, no, that's not how it works. It's, it's taking consistent action and going after what it is that you want. Like I, the whole fate thing drives me nuts, to be honest. So I, I, um, I don't believe in that. I mean, I do in certain areas, but not when it comes to driving after something you want. Right. Right. So, um, so, okay. So you said, okay, I'm not going to outsource my future to fate. Uh, I'm going, to, I'm going to continue on. So how did you end up at Ole Miss then? Yeah. So, okay. So after I got, um, I got kicked off the team at Jacksonville university, um, there was a coach that I started working with when I was 12 years old. I broke my arm and, um, I began building a relationship with him. And this is huge, obviously in, in life and in sales. It's all about relationships. I started building a relationship with him when I was 12 and, uh, during this training period. And after, um, I rehabilitated my arm, we went our separate ways. As I was going into my senior year of high school, I was walking up the steps and I, and I got walk into the film room and there's a new coach drawing plays before a coach that I'd never seen before. And it was Kyle Strong. And it was the same trainer that I had met when I was 12. And just like that, he was a new coach on our team. And we started building that relationship. And he saw, you know, how I how I handled adversity when I broke my ankle and my leadership and my character. And um, when I got kicked out of Jacksonville University or kicked off the team, I found out that Kyle Strong had received an internship at Ole Miss. And um, so I reached out to him and and he said, he said to me, Richie, if there was one person that I would help get on this football team, it was you. And it wasn't because of my size or my talent or anything like that. It was really because of my character. And he knew this. And he said to the coaches this that gave me a chance. He said, this guy will, he's not going to be the biggest or the fastest, but this guy will make everybody around him better. He'll make this team better. You got to give him a chance. And so they gave me a, a one, one hour tryout. Wow. Um, And just before we go to that tryout, okay, as you said, you touched on a couple of key things here. Number one is uh, you built a relationship and it was back when you were 12, but it was a relationship that paid off way later, right? Um, So I think it's a key lesson for salespeople, you know, constantly building those relationships and then, you know, giving that person a reason to believe in you. Like he saw you when you were 12, he saw you face adversity uh, and therefore he knew that this is somebody that he could trust and and not just trust, but somebody he could recommend. And let's face it, as salespeople, getting recommendations and referrals is so key and people won't do that unless they trust you and and they've seen something in you in the past. So he trusted you. So he was happy to give you that referral, that testimonial, and you got your one hour tryout. So how? uh, So, okay. So for a lot of people, it's great. You got this opportunity. You got the one hour tryout. Now, for a lot of people, it would be, oh, my goodness, I've got one hour to prove myself. I mean, a lot of people would maybe even crumble at that stage, even blow their great opportunity. How did you how did you approach that hour? Yeah. So I basically, for the, for the remaining piece of that summer, um, I learned all the, okay. So actually let me, let me dive into this a little bit. We talked about building relationships and the importance of building relationships, um, and how key that is. And in sales, we live in a world of instant gratification where we need something now. Like if I'm going to meet with a client, if I'm knocking on a door, I want to sale now. Um, but in a lot of sales, especially the bigger ones, that's sure. not how it works, right? Absolutely. So it's about building that trust, like you said, in the relationship. Um, and so that's why you're right. I like I like how you, you twisted in the referral piece because that's exactly what happened. Um, but when I look back, you know, it, it, looking at a sales professional and, and in my sales career and in starting businesses, most of the time, it never happens right away. It's sure. the seeds that you to plant along the path that gets you there. Mm-hmm. And so, um, to answer your question in regards to, you know, what I looked, what I did going into that one hour tryout. Um, one thing that I like to talk a lot about as well is overcoming fear. Mm-hmm. And this is something we face in sales. I mean, on a day-to-day basis, whether it's picking up the phone, whether it's knocking on a door, whether it's having to tell a client and say, we can't fulfill. Um, these are things that we have to face. And it was, it was, 
it's identical. It's the identical emotion that I had to efface um, during that one one hour try, walking into the tryout with guys like Michael Orr from the blind side and Mike Wallace and all these guys, Eli Manning. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, man, talk about having to overcome fear. <laughs> um, but and, uh, what fear causes people to do is to procrastinate, right? And I was sitting there and I was like, I just want to go home. Or it causes us to feel the, the feeling of fear the fear of failure mm -hmm. is something that holds a lot of people back. And, and I felt these things, you know, what will my friends think of me if I don't make the team? What will my family think of me? I went all the way to Mississippi and, <laughs> and for this one, one hour tryout. Um, but what I did is I just prepared myself the best I could. I learned the ins and outs of exactly what I was going to need to do at the tryout. I practiced it over and over and over again, which built confidence. And a human being with confidence is the most powerful thing there is. And so um, when I give a formula on overcoming fear, I talk about you know, having a mentor or a coach or a manager, someone to advise you, and then getting extremely educated on what it is that you're trying to accomplish or do, and then practice it over and over and over again. If you do those two things, you're going to build confidence. And with confidence, you can overcome any fear, whether it's failure, rejection, the unknown, what people may think about you. And um, I just did those things, and I stood up with my head high and just did the tryout. Yeah, and and a great and a, and a number of great things that you highlighted there again um, for salespeople is you know preparation, right? Being as prepared as you can be, and I think this is something that um, salespeople, whether they're brand new or whether they're veteran salespeople, it's very easy to skip the preparation piece because you're constantly moving from you know one appointment to another, or you know trying to service the customer you sold last month. But preparation and then the practice piece, uh, it's funny. As professionals in, in work environment, you often find that uh, once people have been doing their job for a while or, or sometimes even at the beginning, they don't practice a lot. They just kind of do it and then go home, right? You know, they probably practice their golf swing at the weekend more than they practice their job, right? Um, especially in sales, like role playing and all of that. But those ideas of practicing and being prepared, overcoming fear is 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 fantastic uh, messages. So so what happened at this this one hour? So how did it all transpire in the end? Yeah, so I went out there, I did my absolute best. And uh, I actually I did really well. I did really well. And I was super excited. And I left the tryout. And uh, I was basically, I was just waiting for a call from Kyle, waiting for a call. Finally, my phone rings and it's Kyle. And so I pick up the phone and he says to me, you want the good news first or the bad news? I was like, just give me the bad news, get it over with. And he goes, you didn't make the team. <laughs> and I, I, I almost passed out. And <laughs> he goes, uh, you didn't make the team, but the coaches have decided that they're going to extend you a one week tryout. They're going to extend you a one week tryout to prove to the coaches that you could take the hits that you're about to take on the practice squad. And it goes a lot back to having a mentor and because mm -hmm. um, Kyle was my mentor and he went to the coaches and he went to bat for me. Right. He said, I know this guy's small. He's little. He doesn't look like he belongs. But give this guy a chance. I'm telling you, it's the intangibles that he can bring to the table. It's not his his size and all that, right? Yeah. Um, and so they decided to give me a, a – they extended me a one-week trial. Which is, again, um, a, a great lesson. And, okay, so you didn't close the deal in the first hour, but you got a really good advance where you got – you know, you got a week's long, a week long trial. So it's, it's again, that thing of always looking for some way of progressing things forward, even if you don't get exactly what you want right away and then grabbing that opportunity. So the one week trial came up and you grabbed that opportunity with open arms, right? Oh, I absolutely did. I, I was so excited. The next day I walk into the locker room, everybody else had a plated locker on their <laughs> locker for me. I, I literally had a piece of tape with my name on it and some oversized pads, right. like not pads that fit me. <laughs> yeah, but I was excited. Yeah, and then just tell the rest of the quick the rest of the story. Of what happened to you at Ole Miss then? Yeah, so um, so basically that you know I went out there that tryout and really the difference between me and all the other guys we used to do these tackling drills and and the difference really was this. I wanted it more than everybody else. And the coaches saw it. Uh, dirtiest uniform on the field, hardest worker, running from drill to drill. I just wanted it more than everybody else. And the coaches were like, we can't, we cannot let this guy off this team. He has to be on this team. Right. And so they had to give me a chance. 
uh, built this whole reputation. End of the year, coach gets fired. Right. Come back from Christmas break. We have a team meeting. I walk into the team meeting and I'm not even on the list. I'm not even on the team. And so I'm like, geez. So I come back. I'm not on the team. So that second year to build this whole reputation up again. And at the end of the year, we get invited to the Cotton Bowl. And I go down there, practice with the team for three weeks. Don't get to dress for the game. Just wear my jersey and stand on the sidelines. And we win the game. The team that dresses and plays goes into the locker room. Mm -hmm. And I have to sit on the bus for two and a half hours while the team celebrates. And I was angry. I was like, man, I did everything I could. So I set some goals for myself. And I said, my third year, you know, I'm never going to let this happen again. And going into that year, things were positive. But new recruits came in because I was a walk-on. I was right back on the practice squad again. Mm -hmm. And throughout that year, you know, the excitement of being on the team, those things really started to diminish. And my vision of earning a scholarship, running out of the tunnel, playing in a game got really cloudy. And this is really rare, but we ended up getting invited back to the same bowl game in Dallas, Texas. Same deal. Went down there, practiced with the team, didn't dress, didn't play, had to sit on the bus. And at that point in time, I, I, came to a conclusion that I was going to quit because like I was never going to sure. play. This is, it was, it was out to lunch at this point. And I had a conversation with my dad and I'll never forget this. And he said, and this comes back to the fear of what people may think about you is don't let somebody's opinion dictate your future. Right. And I really thought about it and I was like, you know what? I've got one year left. I'm just going to go all in. And over that summer, I was in the head coach's office every day asking him what could I do. And there were some days I would go to his office and the door was locked and I'm pretty sure he was in there. <laughs> like He was so tired of seeing me. And uh, But I was in the weight room almost every day in the film. I mean every day just doing something and a spot opened up on special teams. And so I took that spot. And, um, and then going into training camp, I had, I knew the playbook, knew what the coaches wanted. And so I did really well. And a lot of the new recruits that year, a couple of them didn't show up and about halfway through offense, um, I earned a spot on offense and, uh, right before the final scrimmage before the season, I ran out the tunnel. It was a bright, it was just something different this day. And it was yeah. a bright blue sky. There was fans in the stands and uh, it was a warm day and I get a tap on my shoulder and it's the head coach. And he turns around, I turn around and he looks at me and all I could really think about in this moment were all these, my fifth grade teacher who told me I wasn't going to be anything. And my, <laughs> my, all my friends had told me Mississippi was a waste of time. And the coach at Jacksonville who cut me and, and uh, he looked at me and he said, you know what? Um, you've given me no choice, you know, and he goes, you're now on scholarship. Congratulations. And, um, you know, that was a, a real, that moment, that feeling that I had was like the greatest moment in the world. I had a great scrimmage and, um, I could tell you the rest a little later, but yeah. that's really kind of the story of what it took to get to that point to get the scholarship. Yeah. And that's and that's incredible because what you just said there, you know, the coach said to you, you gave me no choice, right? And I think that's something that people can take away from this is that you went through the adversity you had, you took a couple of steps forward, then you got knocked back again, then just when you thought things were working out, it didn't, but you kept going. And I think the thing is you kept preparing yourself. You said the last year you just really went for it. But the most important thing is you were ready and willing to take the opportunity when it presented itself, so whether it was special teams or whatever, and you gave them no choice. And I think that's something great for sales people to take away. It's like, are you preparing enough? Are you are you putting in all the work so that um, you're almost giving your prospect or customer no choice but to buy from you because you've done all the hard work, you've proven the value, and you keep um, whatever they put in front of you, you keep coming back and are able to address it. Yeah, and they, they, they said, I learned this from my dad. He said, the definition of luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. Right. And if and in sales, we talked about this. Things aren't going to happen right sure. away, but if you consistently stay with it and stay prepared, there's going to be an opportunity. It's just a matter of time. It will happen. And it's just uh, uh, whether or not you're prepared or not. And if you're prepared and there's an opportunity – boom, you'll get it. And people will say, oh, you got lucky, did it. Oh, it's not luck in my, you know, no. but. And I think the other thing is, I mean, you took the special teams, right? That opportunity is sometimes I think people miss opportunities because they look at it and they go, well, it's not the perfect. It's not exactly what I wanted. So, 
that maybe I'll hold on. Uh, whereas I believe, and in your case, you just proved it, I believe that every opportunity is a path. It may be to a destination or maybe a path to another path to take you to a destination. So you just got to grab it. Um, so just tell us, uh, just to, just we'll finish out in the last few minutes, just tell us about the rest of your time at, at Ole Miss uh, and how that, uh, how that season went for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and, and kind of move forward on what you're yeah. saying there. I mean, you're absolutely right. And so, um, moving forward from that, you know, that, that the spot on special teams wasn't the most glorious. I was the field goal holder. Right. That was my spot on special <laughs> teams, but I knew that was my opportunity to sure. get on the travel bus mm -hmm. three years, every Thursday, running to the locker room to look at the list and not be on it. And to know that every week I was going to be on the bus. That was the big deal in the beginning is get on the travel squad. And so, um, um, and so I was on the travel squad at that point. So I started getting in in games and I got my first SEC catch and I helped the team in certain areas and that, but that you're right. That was the key. That was the one thing that I needed. It wasn't the most glorious, mm -hmm. but is what I had to do in order to get on the bus. And so, um, you know, I didn't end up earning a scholarship, just a scholarship at Ole Miss started in all 12 games, my senior year, got to run out of the tunnel at Alabama and LSU and Auburn and had SEC catches, ended up being a scholar athlete of the year. Actually, that's that right there, oh, awesome. uh, which is a lettering and honor roll in the same year and graduated with a degree from Ole Miss, played some arena football professionally and mm -hmm. wrote a book about it that, that took off and has really inspired and helped people. And I don't share this. Um, I, I want to share this out of gratitude and just mm -hmm. really thankful for the people that have helped me. But I share this because if I can do it with these circumstances, y you can do it with your circumstances. Mm -hmm. And that's why I share it. You know, it's, it's, it's not easy, no instant gratification, things take time, but if you follow the path, you build relationships, you overcome fear, you persist, and you write down your goals, then at least you can say it's possible. Yeah, now this is this has been fantastic, and I and I thoroughly endorse, and I think people should check out your book in in spite of the odds, um, because everything you say is is so pertinent in the world we live in today. As you reference at the beginning today, the world of instant gratification of people shortcuts. You know, there's a shortcut to everything. The reality is there's a shortcut to nothing. Uh, you know, no magic pill. there's no magic pill. There's no silver <laughs> bullet. You can just put all those aside. Everything you've talked about today. It's building relationships, preparing, um, practicing, taking opportunities, overcoming fear and never giving up. I think any salesperson who who uh, adopts that, I think, will be successful. So, Richie, before we finish, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more about you and, and uh, contact you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, at this point in time, I do quite a bit of traveling. I travel the country, um, conferences, corporate events. Um, I'll go in and meet with sales teams. I have a, a literally a step-by-step -step online course for salespeople on right. goal setting and not just goal setting, but actually how to write down a proper goal, what relationships you're going to have to build, what obstacles you're going to have to overcome. So it's written out almost like a vision board that you can look at every single day. Um, lots of studies have been done. 40, if you write down your goal, you have a 42% greater chance of achieving that goal. Yep. And so I, I get have the opportunity to work with sales teams and help them, you know, go from maybe a, a lower percentage of goal of where they are and raise that or build teams together. And so um, the, the best way to find me is if you go to dominatemygame.com and uh, there's a contact page right there. Um, and then I can give you an email address. It might be kind of hard to say during this, but maybe sure. Sure. we we'll can put, put it in the description. Yeah, we, we'll put it on the description, uh, absolutely. Yeah. But as I said, I highly uh, recommend that you check out Richie. As you can tell from, from today, he's got a great story, but he's got great, great key messages that are so pertinent in the world we live in today. So Richie, I want to thank you again for your time. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. This has been another expert inside interview, and uh, see you all again for another one really soon. All right, take it easy, John. Thank you. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.